Last week we got an early glimpse into the city of New Bordeaux, Mafia 3's New Orleans themed virtual playground. But, thanks to our collaboration with 2K Games, we're able to bring you guys even more information from behind the scenes of one of the year's most anticipated games. Not only do we have more exclusive footage, but Bill Harms, the lead writer at Hangar 13 Studios, set aside a bit of his time to answer a few questions we had about the inspirations behind the game. Last week we already touched on some of the inspirations behind the games, especially the classic gangster movie Goodfellas and FX's Justified TV show, but Bill Harms also delved into some new sources as well. One new piece of information he revealed was the inspiration the writing team took from the Parker novels, a long series of crime stories written by Donald E. Westlake, under the pseudonym of Richard Stark. They follow the life of a ruthless criminal who still happens to live by a strict code of conduct. You may not have heard of the series before, but there is still a decent chance you've seen some version of the story, since the first book, The Hunter, inspired not one, but two movie adaptations, 1967's Point Blank and 1999's Payback, starring Mel Gibson. Other literary influences on the game included the work of George V. Higgins and Jim Thompson, both known for their grim and gritty crime thrillers. According to Harms, those novels are populated with anti-heroes and provided a nice blueprint for how we could approach not only Lincoln, but also some of the other characters in the game, like Burke. New Orleans is not an American city that you see in video games nearly as much as, say, New York City or Los Angeles, so building a city directly inspired by it might be difficult. So we asked Bill Harms where they started when planning the world of New Bordeaux. According to him, the awesome thing about New Orleans is its rich history of the real-world Italian Mafia. There were so many things to draw from that sometimes, there was an overabundance of riches. In fact, the New Orleans crime family is arguably the oldest one in the history of the United States that still survives in some form today, as it was founded all the way back in the late 19th century. Not only that, but the height of the family's power is thought to be of the 1960s, right around the time Mafia 3 is set. That's because it was run by infamous mob legend Carlos Marcelo, known as the real-life godfather, and rumoured to have had connections with everything from illegal slot machines to the assassination of the US President John F. Kennedy, making 1960s New Orleans a pretty fitting location for the game's fictional mob violence. But as anyone who's been there can tell you, New Orleans is a pretty strange and unique place. So the team had to make sure to get the region's distinct feel just right. Harms spoke about this saying, Our biggest challenge, on the narrative side, was probably striking the proper balance between slang, dialect and understandability. Getting the feeling of the time and place was obviously very important to us. But you can go too far and then someone playing the game in 2016 might have a difficult time understanding what the characters are saying. So you have to feather those elements in so that they can provide a necessary flavour without overwhelming the intent of the specific scene. Of course, when dealing with the 1960s time period, the team also felt that they needed to accurately depict the troubled racial tension of the day. Last week we touched on this a little bit, revealing that a 60s Playboy interview with NFL running back Jim Brown about the racism he experienced in the South was a major influence. But it wasn't the only source they turned to. According to Bill Harms, we did do our best to pull from as many sources as possible. There were documentaries like Spies of Mississippi, which is about state governments in the South infiltrating the civil rights movement, and also Take This Hammer, which follows civil rights activist Jim Baldwin around San Francisco. He interviews African Americans about their daily lives, and it's really powerful stuff. The game has a pretty large African American cast, and when we are on set, we talk to them about their experiences and make sure the characters felt true to them. That was very important to us. Now it's time for some trivia. Last week we asked you the name of Mafia 2's fictionalized New York City, and the answer was D, Empire Bay. This week we have another Mafia related question. Vito Scaletta, the protagonist of Mafia 2, and the major character in Mafia 3, served in what branch of the United States military? Was it A, Air Force? Was it B, Navy? C, the Army? Or D, Merchant Marines? 
Tell me your answer in the comment section below and I would like to say one last thank you to 2K for collaborating with us on this video. It was really awesome of them and I hope you guys really enjoyed all the content they brought to us.